Hey, my darling, my sweetie. Hey, man, I hungry. Oh. Now, where did you go today? Oh, they didn't do. I don't like it. But the big woman that bar. No, I say my own chemo. The naked way I can talk to her set. Everything can be all right. She can be happy. I can get anything I want. Hey, you know, eh? Hey, see? And she can be happy with our children set. So, look, tell my brother, when you vet, I your friend here. Can't let you with me. I will let you you how to take care of a woman to cool your heart. I will show you woman 101. Beat your woman not cool. You ought to start with. Look at you. Who the woman you? He will buzz your door. This announcement was brought to you by Diaspora Women for Change Incorporated and Alliance for Liberian Women International. Woman, I see a woman. And welcome to the program. Good morning, Walker. Yeah, good morning, Costa. What's up? What's the situation in Liberia? Yeah, I'm okay. And uh, things are like cool on this end. Uh, nothing much. Everybody just go about their own normal businesses. Mm. Yeah. Good. Um. Are you? Did you follow the? Uh, did you follow the situation with the? Uh, the deputy uh, chief of staff, Geraldine, uh, Geraldine George, right? Yeah, Geraldine George. Um, she she was in court yesterday. Uh, I really didn't follow, but uh, she left the stand on yesterday. And Prince is due next. Yeah, the chief of staff. Yeah, I I read um, um, a portion of her testimony, or the highlight of it, and uh, it's interesting. It didn't surprise me. I'm just uh, I, I I I feel good that she actually did speak the truth. And the truth is that uh, George Weir had promised that he would pay uh, the money, the AFL money. Uh, he said he was going to pay it. I remember when, during the transitional period, mm -hmm. when George Weir was about to take over from Ellen, the issue of that money came up. And folks, for those of you who do not understand, let me just give you a little background. This is the, the there was a pension fund established for AFL soldiers. And each month, deductions were made from the soldiers. And those deductions were deposited into that pension fund. Mm -hmm. And that pension fund had accumulated over a period of time and they had up to, I think, a million and a half, I believe $1.5 million uh, that amount had accumulated to all those the, the, the deductions that were made over a period of time. Mm. Now, according to the story, uh, Ellen Johnson Salive had asked $1.9 million, I'm sorry, uh, you know, they have $1.9 million in their, in their account for the soldiers. Mm. And, and this is not government money. This is the money for the soldiers. So these deductions were made every month. So according to Jared and George, and according to what we all knew, was that Minister Brownie Samukai was authorized, duly authorized, by then-President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf to use that money for something else. In fact, we're told that there was something in the budget. Uh, in the budget, there was a need. There was, there was some kind of urgent need for money for the soldiers or for the army. And that money was not there. They didn't mm -hmm. have that money. So President Salif authorized Brownie Samukai to use that money for the very same army, but for a purpose other than, you know, the pension. Okay. Because the money was pension money. But she authorized Browning to use the money for something else. So Browning Samukai, according to the story, did not use this money without President Sirleaf's authorization. Mm. So apparently what Browning did, now Browning is a smart man, Browning made sure that yep. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf communicated this to George Weir, the incoming president, president-elect George Weir at the time. So during that time, George Weir publicly stated, now I, re I remember this, 
George Weah, President-elect George Weah, stated that he, when uh, inaugurated president, would pay this money through the budget. So yesterday, Geraldine George simply said that. The Deputy Chief of Staff, she said, yes, President Weah agreed to pay this money back. His government took responsibility. Before he even came to power, he said, when I am inaugurated, I will make sure this money is paid back. Because Ellen Johnson Salif had told George Weah about how this money was used, and therefore, yeah. Ellen secured Weah's commitment to refund the, the pensioners' uh, fund with this money. Because the money was $1.9 million. Now, yeah. with Ellen's instruction, Brownie Samuka used up 1.2 million of this money. So the remainder was $700,000 yeah. in the bank account. So when they discovered that the money had reduced to $700,000, they set up a committee to investigate what happened and how the money was used. You know? So that's what they, that's, that's, that's what they did. According to Geraldine George, she says, quote, the money was not personally used by any of the defendants, but it was used for an unrelated issue. You see what Geraldine, uh, Geraldine told, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, Geraldine told, rest in peace. Deputy Chief of Staff Geraldine George says, the 1.2 million was not used by Brownie Samokai or by uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, what's his deputy name, uh, JJ, Mr. Johnson, Deputy Minister for Administration. She said, quote, Oh my God, the connection is bad. Uh, the connection to Liberia is weak. Uh, let's see whether we can get Boaka back. This is an interesting development because this thing, when it came up, it made it seem like uh, Bronny and his people went into the account and Good they then. stole. Okay, Boaka? Boaka? Okay, you are back. Yes. Bye. Well, you are the one back. I mean, my internet is strong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Internet, our internet job here, yes. Good. So, Geraldine George said, quote, in her testimony yesterday, the money was not personally used by Brownie Samuka because she said any of the defendants, and the, the defendants are the controller, Brownie Samuka, and Deputy Minister for Administration, JJ, Mr. Johnson. So, she said the money was not used personally by any of the defendants but it was used for an unrelated issue mm -hmm. so that is a the point they didn't use the money for themselves but the money was the Ellen authorized them to use the money for something else other than what it was meant for it was yeah. meant for a pension it was pension money but Ellen told Brian Samokai Oh yeah, we need the money. Let's use it for something else. So they took one point two million dollars out of the money and used it for something else. So uh, Dennis Zianka, who was chief of staff at the time, will also appear. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because he was chief chief of staff when the pension fund was established. Prince Johnson, who is the current chief of staff, will, will appear. Is expected to appear today, Tuesday, to testify. Yeah. And Bronny Samokai has repeatedly admitted. To the payment transaction he said that the payment was made with the approval of the commander-in-chief and that that's true brownie samonga did not jump into that account and take that money and eat it ellen johnson said he told him go ahead and use the money and she is the commander-in-chief he played a smart game there costa uh, yeah by making yeah. sure ellen told george we are mm -hmm. yeah yeah that was a smart game yeah so George Weah, who had not even come to power, went on record and said, I will pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, everybody knows how George Weah came to power. He came to power with Ellen's uh, support. So Brandon yeah. Samoka made sure, he said, Ellen, that money you made me to take from the AFL people account, please tell, from the pension fund, please have your successor acknowledge it and commit to paying it back. Mm. That, 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 that's what Brandon did. But, but so what the waste of time are in court? Why are we wasting Because time? the what, government what? is stupid. Oh. We have statements <laughs> all over the place where Joe we are said, I will pay the money back. Then you go carry the people to court. 
Black guy, does that make sense to you? No, not at all. Jawia agree, I will pay the money back. Ellen told Jawia, Jawia, I instructed Brandon Samokai to take 1.2 million dollars from the AFL People Pension Fund. Please commit publicly to paying it back. Brandon Samokai made sure, Brandon, that's stupid, man. Mm -hmm. if, if Brandon was stupid, man, Brandon was not going to tell Ellen that. Mm -hmm. He was going to say that he said, oh man, no problem, man, when the other government kind of power. But Brandon Samokai made sure Ellen Johnson said he told George Weir. And said, told you, and, and, apparently it was Brandon who even said, issue a statement. <laughs> Brandon Samokai that I know, he probably told, uh, he probably told Ellen, say, Madam President, with all due respect, I think he, 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 he should make it public. So George Weir issued a public statement. George Weir, who was president elect at the time, he issued a statement. He said, I will pay the money when I come to power through the national right. budget. Look at that. Then you take Brownie Samokai and Deputy Minister JJ to court. For what? Did they steal the money? No. no. Who, who instructed them to use the money? The commander in chief of the AFL. Did did uh, was President We are aware of the money? Yes. In 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 in, in, in fact, the, the Daily Observer story closes by saying, despite Samukai's explanation and documentary evidence established between the former president and President Sirleaf and President Weir, so there was evidence. Apparently, Ellie wrote the thing to George Weir, and George Weir wrote back. Mm -hmm. No, I said, Brian Day, whom, whom, where, why? <laughs> That's smart, man. He said, Oh, you think I can go so they can say I don't want to talk to money? He said, Madam, Madam President, please write President and let Joe this letter, yeah? Ellen wrote a letter. Then the one Joe said, Joe please write Ellen the letter by her. <laughs> Reply make to it, her. Make it public, yeah? Let us see it. Let, let it be all in the news. Make so, it public. Uh -huh. And why I, I remember this thing was made public. All of us heard it. That Browning Samukai, that Ellen had agreed, uh, had told Wea, and Wea had agreed to pay the money back. You see that? Yeah, but at that time, uh, President Wea could say anything just to come to power. He could agree for anything. But another point, the point anything. is that he said it. Browning had cleared his heart. At least that's that's one thing we all know Browning did. Browning cleared his heart and said, look, at least now, Nobody can say, you know, uh, they know how the money business and we got. We, I made sure it was clear. You see? So this is the issue here. So this case here is a waste of time, Barkay. The point I'm trying to make here, folks, is that the case is a waste of time. The, the current deputy chief of staff, appointed by the current president, said it in court yesterday. Former, uh, former chief of staff, I mean, Zianka, will say the same thing in, in, in court today. Eh. He will say the same thing. Ellen instructed yeah. Brownie to use the money. Do we are committed to paying the money back? Simple. What is the case there? Why are you prosecuting Brownie Samokai over this money? You won't prosecute Brownie, find something else. But the particular AFL money issue, it was laid to rest. Mm -hmm. It was laid to rest. So you won't go after Brownie Samokai find something else but this one makes absolutely no sense at all nobody's defending brown and salmon guy here. no but the issue is thank god the people themselves are saying it the 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 people who are leading the army are saying they say yes the money was our pension money yes it was 1.9 million and ellen told brown and salmon guy to use 1.2 million and brownie made sure ellen informed george we are and george we are committed to repaying the money so why are you wasting all of our time, Barker? Resources. Not just on the You're wasting the resources. Why are you going to call over the kind of thing here? That's, that, that, look, that Serena Sifas then doing the nonsense. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that we are persecuting Brandon Samuel 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 This is a freaking waste of our time. You got better things to prosecute? John we are in Samuel Twist stole 25 million. Huh? You're not going after that one? The map up, the map up exercise money. Up to now, no single, not a single person who was indicted. We read a report from the LSEC, didn't we? 
We did. We read, we read, we read the report. The report named people. People who went out in the field. They said there were six teams of people that went to do the, the transaction with the money changers, right? Mm -hmm. Six teams. It named the team leaders. It said the team leaders went. They went to money changers. Some of the money changers that did not even exist. They went to money changers that, that exist. But if they transacted... If they change five thousand US dollars with them, they will write in their report one hundred thousand US. If they transacted with a money changer uh, to the total value of fifty thousand, they would write two hundred thousand. That is fraud. The thing is crystal clear. But do you know the reason why they don't want to go after those ordinary uh, uh, team leaders? Because those team leaders were instructed to do what they did by Samuel Twain. Samuel Tua was the one that told them how to steal the money. You go to a money changer. Okay, money, money changer, Braga, Braga Kamara. I want yeah. to buy 5,000 Liberian dollars. I want to buy the equivalent of 5,000 Liberian dollars. Braga sells 5,000 to you. In your report, you write 100,000. Then when the investigator went to investigate, they went to the money changers that were listed. The ones that could be found. And they said, no, but Braga only did $5,000 transaction with, with me. Here is the receipt. So why did Braga lie that he changed 150000 with money in change John Brown or when he actually did only $5,000 transaction? Such a clear, blatant uh, theft that can easily be prosecuted. But do you know the reason why they will never prosecute the team leaders? The team leaders are free. And they are free to go because John Weir and Samuel Twell were in on it and they stole the money. They told them what to what to do. How can I send you on the field to go and change money? You mm -hmm. you you go to a money changer. He tells you I can only sell the equivalent of twenty thousand US dollars to you. You mm -hmm. buy the equivalent of twenty thousand. You give him twenty thousand US. He he gives you twenty thousand the equivalent of, of of that amount in Liberian dollar at the agree rate. After you leave, you write in your report that you bought 50,000 US from that money changer. Later on, when an investigation is prompted and the investigators go out into the field to verify with that particular money changer, he tells the investigators, hey, Boka lied on me. I did not mm -hmm. sell 20,000, the equivalent of 20,000 US to Boka. I sold the equivalent of 5,000 to Boka. Ah, mm. well, how can Boka lie? In this manner, I mean, he in some cases they they increased the amount from five thousand to hundred fifty thousand. There was a particular money changer on Kerry Street. Mm -hmm. They bought five thousand US dollar worth of money, five thousand US dollar worth of Liberian dollars from the money changer. Then they wrote in a report that they bought one hundred and fifty five thousand dollar US worth of Liberian dollars. Jesus Christ! Now look at look look at the jump. <laughs> look at what is. Of five thousand, one hundred thousand, that would be two thousand percent, right? Two thousand yeah. percent, and then so that's two thousand five hundred percent increment. Jesus Christ, a Nazareth black guy. Mm. These guys went and they they inflicted the amounts. That's one thing. The other thing that they did, many of the money changers they say they use do not exist. Do not exist. That's they listed problem. money changers that still cannot be found today. Yeah, they list the money. Then the stupid fool George will assist there, and he expects us to accept it that the investigation is over, is concluded. The reason is simple: when Ellen came, Ellen stole a lot of Liberian dollars and gave a lot of it to George Weir. George Weir had container load of Liberian dollars with him. He had it during the campaign. He was spending Liberian dollars during the campaign. So George Weir needed money. He needed to buy that US. To, to he needed to swap it. So when they did a map up thing, the map up thing was a golden opportunity for them to swap their own money. They used the map up exercise, Bwakai, mm -hmm. to buy money from themselves. That is the reason why there are lots of money changers that do not exist in the report. Ghost money changers. Who is the biggest money changer of them all? George Minor Weir is the biggest money changer in the whole republic. <laughs> <laughs> he had a huge quantity of Liberian dollars that he neither swapped or, or converted into USD. He was keeping that money at home because when, they, when it was during the elections that the, 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 the containers of money were, were coming in. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And Ellie said, oh, to hell with it. That is the reason why Charles Sirleaf and Milton went and printed money unauthorized. You remember yeah. what the report says? They printed an excess of what? 1.9 billion? That was not approved? Yeah. Oh. The excess. They printed an excess of 1.9 billion. What is 1.9 billion, Librarian? That's a lot of freaking money. They printed money that was not approved. So they brought this money and Ellen gave it to George Weah and George Weah was just spending money during the elections. Librarian dollars. Brand new crispy banknotes. So after the elections, he was left with a lot of freaking money. Mm. And so they needed an idea. And so twice I said, oh, but chief, the whole thing with the shortage of uh, USD or librarian dollar, I mean, excess librarian dollar, we can do something. How? Oh, we, we can do some, some, something called map up. Then they went to our reserve account at the Federal Bank of New York. They took out $25 million on July the 10th. They brought the money. And the first thing they did, they decided swapping the money. They swapped their own money. Oh, yeah, some of you say that, you don't even know what I'm talking about. The reason why there are ghost money changers in the report, who wrote the report? I didn't write the report. The report was written by the LACC. Yeah, that is the it. PIT, the Presidential Investigation Team, which was formed by the president. They did the investigation. They wrote a report. The report says that there were many money changers that were listed in the report of money exchange bureaus that do not exist. The phone numbers that they gave for them do not exist. The names of the various businesses and their locations do not exist. Because the case is very, very easy to handle. It's very Question. simple. The money, the, 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 the team leaders, the six team, <laughs> team leaders should simply be arrested and prosecuted. That, that but do you know why they will not prosecute the team leaders? Because George Weir is the biggest money changer that they transacted with and he is never going to be exposed. Why? This we know we have stolen their money. Look, the country is so bad. The president is a damn bloody criminal. And everybody knows this. And you're sitting there and you know he stole millions and millions of dollars from you in this map of exercise and nobody can touch him. Stupid criminal. Because how the hell would you go and put fake money changers in a, in, a, in, a, in a report? Money changers that do not exist. Do you think people will not go find out? Did they expect that people... Let me, let me tell you why Ellis Coffey resigned. Ellis Coffey was the one that headed the team that wrote the, 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 the report. That's it, is it, man? But he resigned. Today, he's in Minnesota, afraid to go to Liberia. Ellis Coffey's his life was being threatened. He was being threatened by Samuel Twe. Mm -hmm. what, because the plan was, they did not expect Ellis Coffey to include the 25 million dollar map up thing in the investigation. They only expected him to write for them to do the, the investigation into the 16 billion. But Ellis Coffey said, no, we cannot investigate only the 16 billion in isolation of the 25 million because the 25 million the 16 billion is what gave rise to the map up ex exercise because the market was flooded with liberian dollars and we needed to do a map up of the excess liberian dollar liquidity therefore we did the map up exercise so the map up exercise was caused was premised by the 16 billion dollar that was you know in, uh, badly infused so ellis coffee said we got to investigate both in order to get a comprehensive and holistic understanding of what happened that the trouble ellis coffee called ellis coffee said to confidants of his who confided in me that he used to get these strange calls from people inviting him to meetings to secret locations they were planning to murder ellis coffee the same way they murdered matthew innes Sure. Samuel Twell was so angry that Ellis Coffey did the $25 million map up exercise. He was so angry. Guess what? Let me tell you, let me tell you a story. Ellis Coffey went to George Weir, his own crew brother, and said, hey, my man, the men that won't kill me, or Twell that won't kill me, they've been calling me to go to a secret meeting and dinner. George Weir never said a word to Ellis Coffey. Are you listening? Listening. Ellis Coffey said that how you look at it for long and said, my man, I gotta resign from this job and go. Ellis Coffey resigned from the job and ran away. I'm telling you something serious. This is what happened, boy guy. Ellis Coffey said the, the guys were planning to kill him because he did the map up report and George Weir was in on it. When he went to tell George Weir that he was, that he had fear for his life, that he was getting these strange phone calls 
People inviting him to meetings or strange locations. He said, Josh, we have never said a word. I'm telling you, boy. Okay. That's how that man resigned. Today, Alex Coffey is sitting down in Minnesota. He, he said he's not going to Liberia. He resigned as a, the director of the financial intelligence unit. He said now in Minnesota, a die CDC man. He ran away because they were planning to murder him the same way they murdered Matthew Innes. Look, George Weir is a hardened criminal and they are not smart ones at all. How can you still map up money in that fashion? How can you lie and create ghost money changing bureaus that do not exist? Ghost bureaus. Because George Weir is the biggest money changer in the country. The biggest money changer in the country is George Weir. That is what they did. And you know, Liberians, you know this. You know the man stole millions and millions of US dollars in the map up exercise. You know the reason why George Weir has refused to prosecute people is because he is involved. And the beautiful thing about Liberians is that they just go on with their lives. Oh yeah, the man stole some money. Yeah, no problem. That, 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 hey, that, that, that the man wanna turn to steal. Amen. Amen. Liberians. Oh, the people. I can understand the people. The man stole millions of dollars. You owe I away, and you just sit there and you just allow it. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What? I can understand you people. I really, I really can't. The, what do we are promise? When the report went to LACC, I mean, went to after the report was produced by the press, the, the presidential investigation team. Where did he send a report, Baka? Okay? To LACC. LACC did their report. What did LACC say after they did their audit? <laughs> their audit confirmed everything and more. Mm -hmm. It confirmed that people stole money. What did Joe do with the with the LAC, uh, LACC thing? He took it and sent it again where? To he, uh, uh, the audit? He, no, he took the audit report and sent it back where? To LACC. LACC, yeah. The man just sent the report from one place to another place because he doesn't want to prosecute. How can he prosecute those ordinary team leaders who were instructed by Samuel Twe on what to do? And that sloppy ball with a colorful face, Samuel Twe, is sitting there. And you see what he's done. <laughs> and you see what he's done. And, and this is why George Weir cannot fire Samuel Twe. This is one of the key reasons why George Weir cannot fire Samuel Twe. George Weir had a continual load of Liberian dollars that Ellen gave to him during the elections. When John Weir promised to pay the was when, when he paid was during the, you remember during the election, what did John Weir do for the Liberian students that were taking was the West African exams? What what did he do? He paid for it. What what currency did he use to pay? LD. <laughs> Baka, you smart man, Piggy. Well, folks, are you remember? Is it coming now, full circle? During the elections, John Weir promised to pay was the broke board that we all knew very, very broke. He promised to pay uh wire fees or was for nine graders and what twelve graders, right? Mm -hmm. And what currency did he use to pay the money? Liberian dollars, brand new Liberian dollars, Liberian banknotes. Where did John Weir get all that money from? Ellen Johnson Salid gave it to him. Are you wondering why Milton Weeks and Charles Shelley printed excess of 1.9 billion? Are you, are you wondering? Wait, wait, wait. Do you know why George Weir finally granted them the bill? You remember when they were when George Weir was refusing to grant bill to Milton Weeks and Charles Shelley? Ellen Johnson Shelley went to George Weir and had a conversation with George Weir. You said now here, you stupid boy, you know that the excess money the people printed are because of you and the money we gave you for the campaign. Why? You put my children in prayer for the money I gave you, you stupid boy. <laughs> the next day, what, what happened? Milton Weeks and Charles Salif, their bills were accepted. Let me tell yeah. you something. You, you know why they were in jail for a while? Because they could not find any insurance company to put a bill that would worth the money that they were in, in jail for. There was no insurance. They could not find bail. They could not make bail because the people were in jail for having stolen billions of Liberian dollars. They could not find any insurance company to put up the bail. 
So on what grounds were they released? You know, sometimes Liberian people, you don't investigate. So you have to wonder. They say they accepted a bill. But why they accepted a bill? They, they posted no bill. Charles Sirleaf and Milton Weeks posted no bail. You know why they free Milton? They free Milton because they couldn't leave uh, Milton in because Milton, the early son. Milton. Look at Milton, look at Charles. Charles Sirleaf is actually a Weeks. He's not, he's not no damn Milton. I mean, he's not no damn Sirleaf. Look at Charles Sirleaf and look at Milton Weeks. They are brothers. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf play far. She played fast. She played <laughs> Look at Milton Weeks and look at. <laughs> we're talking money, baby, but we got to put all the facts on the table. Why? You know that one, man. We, look at Milton and look at Charles. They are brothers. You know why the, the Weeks people, Weeks family, have all the lucrative jobs in, in, the, in the government? I mean, Ellen, Ellen, Ellen was playing far with, with old man Weeks. <laughs> and, and when she got caught. Charles is not a Sirleaf. He's a Weeks. Milton is his brother. Mm -hmm. Look at the two men as I speak to you. Go on, go on, go on the internet and I find their, their photos. Milton and Charles, they look so much freaking alike. But I'm saying this to say, look. So, the, the people did not make bail. People who are in jail for stealing billions and printing money unauthorized printing of the nation's currency violation of the constitution george we are let them go how did george we are let them go why oh you're wondering ellen went and sat down with george we are and said look at look at you huh look at you do you not know that the money we gave you for the campaign was the money that milton and charles printed the money you pay was. You know, you like mm -hmm. you easily let things go. The money John we are pay was John we are get money for you pay was for thousands of thousands of Liberian students. He paid all that money in Liberian dollars. So he, he still have money left in the container. So when they came to power, they were looking for a way to swap the money. And so Twice said, let do map up. It was twice idea. My boy, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, like we said, and I would say, Joe, we are on fire 12. We are and 12 will go to the grave together. He, 12, mm -hmm. Miguel. So they give the power now to, uh, to I said to, uh, President, we are, we can't be moving with LD, man, Brazil. I will be passing BB Borden and I'll be walking with LD. They did not make it out of the US that one spin, we just spin one and for all. We can make it, they'll be passing around with LD in our pocket there. Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the how they wanted to do the thing. Mm -hmm. The first morning that Joe Weah started building, he, he, he places them way. Eh? Do all the people, mm. all the, some of that money came from the library now. That Joe Weah, Joe Weah had a lot of money. He had a lot of Liberian dollars. A lot of money. And here Ellie said, Nayo, in this country. Hmm? Hmm. And he said, say now in the country after destroying the country, the wicked old witch. And she stayed living. The word not fail. The wicked old witch is still living. The word is not fair. The woman destroyed the country. So you go up, you come down. George, we are will never prosecute. What did the man promise us, Baka? Did he not say after the report was submitted to he asked GSC to yeah. do an order in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. We all knew it was unrealistic. GOC, GSC could not do an audit in two weeks. Yeah. It, it actually took almost two months. But after GSC concluded the audit, Joe Weah said he was going to prosecute people. Did he prosecute anyone? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why would he prosecute anyone? Because he, if, if they arrested those six team, team leaders during the map-up, who carried out the map-up exercise? Who inflicted the numbers and listed fake money changers? Mm -hmm. If they arrested them to prosecute them, whose names you think they will, they will, they will call? The president. They will call Samuel to his name. That way, and <laughs> and if they call Samuel to his name as the one who told them to steal and to falsify transaction records with money changers and to create mm -hmm. ghost money exchange bureaus. 
Twer would be in trouble. And if Twer goes down, you think Twer would go down alone? No. So George Weah has to protect Twer because Twer has to protect George Weah. This is what happened. And you all Liberians, you, you all know this. George Weah is a damn criminal. And the boy will destroy the country. He will continue to destroy the country. You know, it's one thing to be a criminal, a petty thief. But it's even worse when you are a stupid one. And that is the problem you have. Why he is looting the country blind and destroying our institutions. Violating procurement laws left and right. Because he hates procurement. He hates all PPCC, all that kind of thing there. You go do bidding. Joe, 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 we are, hates bidding. Huh? Mm. He hates, he hates to do bidding, bidding processes. He doesn't like all that kind of stuff there. Bidding, go do Wait, bidding. Not, it's a waste of time for George Weir. So, George Weir, two and a half more years before elections, the ball will destroy this country. You know, since the government came into power, uh, PPCC have become very useless. Very, very useless. Uh, Why? Yeah. Oh no, Dawa Jala. Dawa Jala used to. Dawa Jala used to fight with Elling. Yeah. Dawa Jala used to fight with government officials. Mm -hmm. He used to say no. When Dawa Jala tell you no, is no. You can go to Elling. You can go to the sky and fall down. You Dawa Jala will not approve or will not sign off on your your procurement process if it was not done the right way today you have janga ko's wife there a daha sedition his wife he's a controller general of the republic and his wife is the procurement boss jesus christ it's finished <laughs> they say the other day the generator spoiled at george weir's house listen to this story the generator spoiled at george weir's house and they wanted to buy a new generator. Of course, according to the process, they must do competitive bidding. They have to ask, they have to announce it first, ask different generator vendors or, 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 or sellers to bring their bid proposals, right? For the different sizes of generator. But they would say, well, we are looking for a 150 kV or a 100 kV. Then they the vendors would come and, 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 and present their proposals with their different prices and the services that they're that they offering. Maybe they will offer after-sale maintenance for one year. You know what I mean? Something like that. My man, this is a job we have to the boy. Y'all don't bring that nonsense on me. Huh? But I will be in that level. How are you going to tell me that you won't go to the PPCC? And I'm my generator spot to my home. You can't talk about you won't go to PPCC. The man hates PPCC. <laughs> He hates it. The man hates any organized structure. He doesn't like it. He's a foolish boy from G from Gibraltar. He hates these things. And you take a whole country of five million people and entrust the country to a stupid boy to be president. Who oh, you know he left from his right. This is the man saying, you're, you're, you're moving from my faith. As said, Nathaniel Maguire told me the reason why they did not do a bidding at the airport to award the, that contract they awarded to that company. That we exposed the last time. The Jordanian firm. My girl said, my man, what are you mm -hmm. talking about? The man said they will bring airplane. The president went airplane. You said, what? Are you listening to me? My girl summoned Baco. <laughs> Will Baco Freeman. The former airport boss. That's what made the man resign. My girl summoned. And Baco should not have signed it. I keep saying it all the time. Baco should not have signed that deal. My girl summoned Baco. He said, my man, Kaya. Baco went to the Ministry of State. He said, my man, Sarah, yeah. You had a contract. You are the head of an institution. The Minister of State drafts a contract, basically awarding a key component of your services that you generate revenue from. Luggage, ground handling. And they want to award it to a company out of Jordan that has no experience in ground handling. And Bagua sat down there in my girl's office, truly. My girl said, sign the contract. I said, Miguel told me himself, I sweat on my son's life, Henry Costa Jr. Miguel told me himself. He said, my man, the man, the man, the, 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 the man, yeah. I told the man to sign the contract. Miguel sat Baco down in his office and told Baco, you will sign this contract right here. Ba Baco said, Mr. Minister, can I take a copy of the contract to my board for them to review it? And so, so, he said, you will sign the contract. 
The person saying, my son, I can't you. Why, 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 why are you delaying the default? The poor won't bring, the, 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 the poor won't bring plane. The president won't have the, the airline. Way back, do, 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 we used to have Labra, Labra Airway. The president won't open mm. Labra Airway again. Baco took the pen and signed the contract in Attendant McGill's office. Because McGill and Joe Weir had already taken $1 million from the Jordanians. For the for the contract, you you do you know why the contract never worked? Do you know why they never gave it to them? Because of the cost of show. When we exposed yeah. it and published the contract document, the American embassy stepped in and said, No, 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 no. We don't trust these Jordanians. You want to give the airport ground handling services to these people? No, no, no. We spoil a deal. You know how many deals we spoil for these people? We spoil a Senegali deal. Some of you are sitting there with your big mother open your eyes, your talks, your host. Look, we have put saying in John We are Gary so many times. That one he hates us so much. Mangil and we are took one million dollars from the Jordanians. You know how I know? I know because the Jordanians were complaining after they took the money from them, signed the contract, promised them that they will give them the ground handling services. In exchange, they will bring an air airplane. The Jordanians were staying at Farmington Hotel for almost one year, waiting for them to be given the ground handling operations. I say the guys were there every night, and then they will have dinner, invite my girls to the hotel, they will bring invite government officials, they will go sit and eat. My girls are telling them, Yo, hold your house more. Let we stay talking to the Americans so the American can agree. The American embassy said, No, you know where the American embassy heard it from? From the Costa show. You know how many the American embassy can hear from us? The American embassy heard it from the concert show and they went straight to McGill. So we do not approve of you guys giving this airport to the to the to the Jordanian company. At that time, McGill and we had already taken the one million. Baco Freeman got angry, he re he resigned. But Baco should not have signed the contract. I keep saying it. Baco resigned today, Baco is sitting now in America. McGill took one million US dollars from the from the Jordanians. Then the Jordanians started making threats. Listen to this, Baka. When they became impatient that McGill would not give them the, the ground handling oper operations, cargo handling, all that kind of stuff, this is what they were going to give them. When they couldn't get it, mm -hmm. then the Jordanians started to complain. They started complaining. Oh, uh, man, you know, you just stay in the country for almost a year, stay in a hotel, accumulating. They stayed at Farmington Hotel for so long that, according to my sources, Farmington Hotel had to give the Jordanians a discount. Wow. They had to give the Jordanians a discount for the rooms that they were staying in. Some of them were staying at Malapur Hotel and some of them were staying at Farmington Hotel at the airport. They had to give them a discount because they had stayed there for almost one freaking year. Why were they waiting, waiting for McGill to give them? McGill said, y'all don't, don't worry. The, the American people, we are talking to them. We're trying to convince them. Uh, and they were the reason. Because of the cost of show. We save the country in, on that particular front. We save you from the Senegali fish deal. Some of you are ungrateful. You don't appreciate the work that we do. But we will remind you some, some, sometimes. We save you. Call us arrogant. The work that we've done, most of you have not have not have not, have not done it. George Weah was about to bring 300 Senegali vessels to your country to deplete your fish stock as the Senegalese did with their own. We saved you. We, the Costa Show. George Weah and Mangueo has signed to give away your airport to Jordanians to do ground handling. We saved you by exposing it. We did it. The, the Costa Show. Sometimes you have to acknowledge your own good deeds when other people don't. The Jordanians are threatening. Listen to me, boy. The Jordanians are threatening that if, if Maggio can get all the ground handling operation, the, the contract, we will expose it. Maggio told them, y'all want ask stupid, I will deport you. Are you listening? Maggio threatened to deport the Jordanians. I said, boy, did you just hear what I said? I'm hearing. Maguil, I'm Nathaniel hearing. Fallow Maguil threatened to deport the Jordanians after eating their one million dollars. After the American embassy refused for them to give the contract to the Jordanians, and he kept them waiting and waiting and waiting, and they had lost patience. Because they gave this spelling and not getting uh, uh, nothing in return. Maguil yes. said, "I will deport you," and that would not have been the first time Maguil would have, uh, would have deported someone. 
Mangil deported the Indian man who, the, the one of the biggest, he had a motorcycle business. Mangil deported the Indian man. During the elections, they took motorcycles from the Indian man. 2017 elections. Mangil took the motorcycles as chairman of CDC. When they came to power, the Indian man wanted his money back. Mangil, Ma Mangil refused to pay the Indian man his money. Instead, what did Nathaniel Mangil do to the Indian man? Somebody help me with the man's name, man. You know the man from Red Light. He got a big Indian place. Uh, the, the motorcycles, he brings motor motorcycles. Mangil deported the man. Because the man was asking for his money. That's what Nathaniel Mangil did. So, look, let me tell you something. Nathaniel Mangil is an extremely dangerous, evil human being. He's the most... You think George Villa is wicked? Mangil is a very wicked guy. So, the man's name is Rohit. Rohit Sujit. That's the man's name. The Indian man. Rohit Sujit. They deported Rohi Sujit. The man supplied CDC with motorcycles during the 2017 elections on the promise that they would pay later. When they came to power, the man was pressuring Mangil to pay for his motorcycles. Mangil ordered the man's illegal deportation. <laughs> pay with Nathana Mangil. Rohi Sujit, please tell me the name of his business center. He was one of the biggest motorcycle importers in the country he was illegally deported on Nathaniel Maguire's instruction what was his crime for simply asking to collect the money that CDC was owing him that was his crime mm. you know what they and the Jordanians have left him the Jordanians left they got tired especially when Maguire threatened the, Jord the Jordanians with deportation after they were harassing him for their one million or the contract, guess what? Mm. The Jordanians got a fair with all the threats that Maggie was giving them. Maggie was issuing them threats. You, you ask to pay, I will do something to you. Because they were threatening, they wanted to have press conference. They wanted to have press conference to explain. How do you think I know? People they, that were close to them. Mm. People they used to go to, to talk. In fact, there was one time one of them even mentioned that they wanted to come to the Costa show to explain what Maggio had done. Oh, when Maggio threatened them, they ran away. They left that one million dollar in Liberia with Maggio and Joe. We had they ran away. Are you listening, Baka? Mm -hmm. They ran away. They left their one million dollar in Liberia and ran away. So you have a criminal enterprise here, folks. You don't have a government. You have a criminal organization running the country. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you think you're going any, anywhere? You have a criminal. Maggio told me the reason why the day they were because and the president won La Brea Airline. La Brea Airline? La Brea Airway. That's what the president wanted. But it was the one million dollars that the president that the, the, the Jordanians gave them. And we spoiled the deal. I mean, well. The Jordanians lost because they paid Maguire and we are one million dollars to get the contract or all any bidding. And they, they, they didn't get the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? Damn it. Look, I'm sorry for the country. I'm sorry for you. You know, you know, true Beto. I look at the opposition, I look at you for long, I just smile. You think Jawia will have free and fair election in 20, 2023? Mm. Jawia. <laughs> let me ask Chairman Yuri. Let me ask Ome Boakai. Let me ask Elizabeth Cummings and Yomli. You think Jawia will have free and fair election in 2023? <laughs> You'll be sitting on there. You know what? Do you know what Maggio sued me? Does anybody know why? Okay, you are some 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 of you are aware why that Nathaniel Maggio sued me, right? Yeah. But are you are you aware of why Nathaniel Maggio sued me? But he dropped the case though. He never pursued the case. Maggio dropped the case. You know why they dropped the case? Mm -hmm. That the time they were offering me money so I could take the money for us to cancel the protest. So part of the deal was that he would drop the case. Some of y'all don't know anything. 
Why do you think the Maggio case went nowhere? Maggio sued me for 1.5 million. Yeah. Nantania followed Maggio sued me for 1.5 million dollars. Why did he drop the case? He dropped the case because he was trying to sweeten the deal. My man goes out. Goes out. Goes out. I'll drop the case against you and then we'll talk and then, and then we'll get the money so again do the protest. That's why Maggio dropped the case. That's why Nathaniel Maggio dropped the case against me. I never told you. I'm telling you now. I told Maggio, I said, Maggio, how you going to waste my time? He said, you want to talk to me when you got case in court. He said, okay, 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 okay. All right, go that, go that, go that. Don't worry. I will drop the case. <laughs> <laughs> Maggio dropped the case. He dropped a $1.5 million lawsuit against me. And do you know why he sued me? Yes, why he sued me. He sued me because I exposed the deal. After the elections, George Weir sent money to Jerome Corkwear to tell him thank you for cheating for, for him. Mm. When the money went, Mangil was the one that carried the money. Mangil and Corkwear divided the money. And the other commissioners got to know about it and they were angry. <laughs> and they were angry. I, that the story I thought about me, Maggie fell. Maggie said, "Why well, I must say he carried money to Jerome Cockwell? Cor the money was two hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Two hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Joe, we are hard to spend. He sent two hundred thousand U.S. dollars to the election to Maggie took the money. That again, many Maggie will sue me again. But this is why Maggie sued me." Because of that story that I explained. How did I know this? From one of the commissioners at the Elections Commission. He and Maggio made force. Of course, Maggio knows a man. I wouldn't call him any. Maggio threatened him. We heard the story. You know when you and somebody made plow out, how the story can spread. Yeah. The man did not come to tell me. But I learned of it that they made force. Maggio threatened the man. He said, you... You carry my knee around talking about the president gave me money to bring the y'all and me and Cockway divide the money. Two hundred thousand dollar job we are sent to Cockway to say thank you for helping to steal the damn election in my favor. So you sit on there. Opposition, you sit on there. 2023 job we are give it to y'all. We are knows the whole. He knows how to steal the damn election. And he showed him the way. His victory was not legitimate. They stole the election in favor of George Weir. And he sent $200,000 to tell them thank you. And that money brought confusion at neck. <laughs> yeah. But okay, you don't want to sit down and look at it like, bro, plenty. You don't even know. You know why Maggio dropped that lawsuit? Because mm. Maggio was offering me a deal to drop the protest, to abandon the protest. The Jews haven't brought the protest when I went to Liberia. That's why Nathaniel and Maggio dropped the lawsuit. I said, but my girl, how you can say who more go talk about me dropping the protest or withdrawing from the protest? Then you got case in court against me for 1.5 million. My girl said, okay, 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 okay. All right, man, don't worry. What's that? What's that? Don't worry, man. That case, I have nothing, man. You know you my own man. My girl dropped the lawsuit. And do you know why my girl sued? We are told him to sue. Because they were surprised. They were shocked how I got to know that the, we are sent two hundred thousand dollars to election commission to tell them thank you for stealing the, the election they were shocked and they questioned their legitimacy in power that one made them angry <laughs> yeah yeah i said i i i, I said on there, i look at you i just laugh the kind of money joe we have got to spend in 2023 the way joe we have would cheat in 2023 Let's sit on there and say we'll win the election. Yes, sit on there. If John Weir stays in power on the 2023, John Weir will steal the election. And when you steal the election, then the opposition will say, oh, you know, for the sake of the country, like for the sake of peace, and let's just forget it. International will step in, and then you will just forget it. Then John Weir will be there for 20 years. Yes. <laughs> let's go take some call. <laughs> some of all, some of all will do our own thing. Yeah, 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 just sit on there. That way that we go to the election. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you even know Joe Weir. The only man in opposition that knows Joe Weir that, that uh, Mr. 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 Yuri. Come inside, no Weir. Oh, man, oh, man, I know Weir. Yumbly, what's he know Joe Weir from? Me and Ben and I, Yuri, we know Joe Weir. 
who are there with him will know the man. The man that we are by a man. There is nothing that by a man can do. <laughs> yes, yes, you're on there. You'll be passing around. Uh, 2023, we'll move the government. Yeah, right. You'll move government. Let's go take some calls. I tell you yeah, why, no. Basa Zidani, uh, he folks went to the Capitol building there yesterday, you know, on the agricultural stuff. Ah. Uh, like, yeah. So on Monday, February uh, 24th, 2020, the host. The Horses Committee on Agriculture and Judiciary hosted a stakeholder in the focal sector, including our illustrious uh, Director General uh, John S. Flomo, uh, blah, blah, blah. The conference in the conference room of the representatives, the meeting was intended to solicit uh, to solicit uh, the view of those stakeholders on a bill recently submitted by Bon County Representative Edward uh, Kafia. The bill which was preferred to create subsection 8 of the Lacras Act will give us the exclusive right to purchase and export cocoa and coffee. Mm. That what happened yesterday, Gio. <laughs> okay, they still want to change that bill. Yeah. Mm. They want to it change was... the law. Mm. And Zidani is the one they're gonna give it to. By the time they change the act, I'm told Zidani is the one they're gonna give it to. They're gonna say, okay, Zidani will be the one we we are we are outsourcing the, this thing to him, and we don't have capacity and blah blah blah. And I mean, let's take some calls there. Y'all yeah. be twenty twenty three coming. Yo, we are we'll give it we we'll give it to y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Your name where are you calling from? Uh, good morning, Mr. Bakakamara. Good morning, my good friend, brother, Mr. Hemet Pesudo. Max. And uh, uh, they listen to you. The opposition, they are weak, they are sitting, and uh, the country is proceeding in bad direction. They are all watching this government. They are all watching this incompetent president. Uh, the people are dying. People are suffering. The country, look at the most time. There's no job, no investor coming. The so-called opposition, they are sitting, they are watching, looking at this government, our people, Liberia is, Liberia is dying slowly. It doesn't take this many from power. It will take Liberia within 20 or 25 years before we can recover. Mm. I'm telling you, because people are sitting, they are watching. They just feel that Liberia is morosia. Go and travel in the various countries, you will see how your parents are dying. You will see how your uncle, your sisters, your the little kids are not in school. They are dying day by day, our people are suffering. They are only sitting here on social media, blah, 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 blah. The only man that put pressure on this government is him and President Costa. They is why I love him. They is why I would do anything in my life to protect him and President Costa. Because he's seeking the interest of Mama Labiro. Now he's got that interest. But some of the guys that I got, the so-called politicians, they are envying him and President Costa because today the masses listen to him. They is why they are there talking about a bullshit against him and President Costa. But when people are dying, this whole country is in total mess. Look, take it and leave it. Go come in Moravia today and see for yourself the whole country looks at the whole stamp. Yeah. The whole, the whole city looks at the whole stamp. Even yesterday I was surprised. There is no movement. People, people are so... For the so-called Arizona coming, the so-called Joseph Waka, the so-called the Liberty Party, the so-called the Nigerian, they are sitting and people are dying. They want to say, they have the SO has the opposition in Malabira, but they are silent. Then people will say, Margie, I tell you, are still holding your ecosystem. I'm not ecosystem. Because sometimes when I see my people, I have my people are living, I get frustrated sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very confused in what the country is proceeding. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank Max uh, Jabate calling in, uh, you know, normally he visit rural part of Liberia, 0770-102-102-0860-10383. Keep your calls coming in. Let's see if we can take another person here quickly. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Bagai. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Good morning to him and Pedro Costa and morning, my hero. Mm-hmm. Pedro, good morning. In your phone, huh? Okay, Pedro, this is Sama Baba on the line. I call from District 6. Okay. Oh, Pedro, thank you for the show this morning. So, Pedro, some of the recommendations you have made to the government. If the government was taking it, then by now, Pedro, will go fast, Pedro. Pedro, let me tell you this. Pedro, the attorney about it, about the mobile exercise. Petro, this guy then told us that he took the money, he gave it to Nikutan. Why are you telling the Labrador people money and gave it to Nikutan, Petro? Then the report have been lying now on the president's desk. Up to the time, we cannot get resolved. 
from that report what the president is waiting for to get the laboratory people to, 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 to that report. Eh? What the president is waiting for, Petro. So, Petro, I would say the, 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 the president not want to listen to the people that point into power. Petro so a lot of tears growing on in the government. Look at the contract that they gave to, 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 to that people from Banna. Petro, that people are not warm. That people are not warm at all. Look at that contract. That people get a construction on in Banna Grocery. Almost gone almost three years. They cannot finish with Banna Grocery. They go to contract to that kind of people there. Eh? The Petro, the only thing we got to put our house in order okay. as an opposition. We don't put our house in order I can get look at some people putting their mouth on you. You that are speaking for us, putting their mouth on you. But next time, some of them do it, then we will take the airway. We will, we will, we will take the airway too to, to, to number some of them. Okay. We will, because when they start cutting our euro, then we will start replying them back. We're too. Okay. So we will not take that. Thank because you. Because the man is there for us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for the show, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. God bless. That's true. Thank you so much, Samuel Bobo. 0770102102 uh, Keep your calls coming. Let's take another person here quickly. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Yeah, welcome. David Gomu and Kamara speaking from Jakarta. Okay, Ms. Angumu, welcome. Uh, uh, <laughs> I told you, if you can remember, I told you last time. I said the priest and the Muslims will never get up to pray for Nagura. I said Nagura is going to, you know, host. Syria, this Nagura is in. The people suffering, the people suffering this country, the Syrian rape, they are completely suffering to death. It, they got plenty. The whole world, they were, the Pentecost area you're talking about. I don't know where it's selling this people. I don't know where it's living in Nagoya or in the honor of Nagoya. Selling this people. Why was he? Why is he right now to go to a lot of hours to the fact that they have a lot of people Some years to a very plain prayer. I like him. He's a man who don't laugh. I pray to take care. Who came to New Puerto, money to the Taylor Street, this street, and he's got everything. Why? Selling this people. To pick that out, they had a call. They got former cabinet general lawyer, how you call him? Arthur Johnson. Arthur Johnson. Arthur Johnson. Yeah. Why they uh, So they are not picked up in the bureau? Someone clean call. A hurry. Who took the one as one city? And would never find it. Why you can't be prosecuted? Why you can't be prosecuted against the group? I said, repeat, please. Why is. After Johnson, okay. after Johnson, the money will make it. Three, the mm -hmm. company can get it wrong. Or sell us some out to be him. Who stayed in the office? We never, I never knew it's a criminal guy. What's my interest in this? The people who said it's one way, I told you, I tell you, I tell you, why you cannot go to the pen? Why is selling it for chasing people and wrong? Did you go? Why cannot you go to the kid in a way like that? Why cannot I protect you? They tell you that you're going to have to travel. Hmm. What? Okay, Ms. Angumo. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, what's wrong? Give yeah. me a minute. Yeah. And I'm five percent. When is the head of God, the political of the ASU, you know, uh, is that coming? Where's Mr. Parker? Mr. Erick? It's not Mr. Tanda. It's enough for India to take into order. Mm -hmm. It's enough for it to order. For all the property I'm at. Mm. All the food that I'm at, I'm declaring myself to be president of the Republic of Africa. I that will run, I will contest. If we are going to my catastrophe, I will be there, I will contest. Send the blood. Nobody, see this now, I'm from the blood interest. Come from the blood interest. You know what I mean? Give up. But I say, you know, for it, to destroy this country, and postpone that this rule to take over. Why is that the case? Why did you drop it? I will contest it. Did you drop that case? Where the money go? Everybody know where the money go. It's telling us for saying that's a little bit general Republican of the bill. It's sitting down. Ah, I don't hear that. They're correct. Thank you, Mr. Gomo. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. Let me express himself. Uh, well, let, 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 let me say come around to him. You call the corner and go to him. You call it and just make him to him. Everybody's free to do anything. Send him down. He don't care. Come on, people. Take him out of the front. 
Thanks so much. Let the woman express himself. You know, you know, I, I tell you this, and I want the best for the opposition. I love my party, but I love my country more, of course. And I have a great deal of respect for my political leader. I know he loves his country. And and, and I, 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 I know how very frustrated he is with the situation in the country. I, I know this. Uh, he, he heart bleeds for Liberia. And I can speak the same of Joe Buakai. And when I talk to the old man, I know how he heart bleeds for Liberia. The poverty touches him. You know, he, he sees, yeah, yeah, the old man can stop telling me his, his experience, his encounters with people. The poverty, it touches him of how the people are suffering in the country. But I want to say this to them, to the opposition. This man promised us that he would prosecute people for the 25 million. Did he not? Yeah. The man failed to do so. But what did the opposition do? You know, our opposition people think that <clears throat> the reason why some of us resorted to protest is because at least it's the only way we can get the attention of the world and we can get the government to be afraid. Sure. It's the only way. Tell me one other way. You think that how many press conferences and press releases the opposition has not put out? Baka, tell me. Numerous. You have issued many press releases. We are does not listen to press releases because he does not read them. The man does not read. But it is protest that the man is afraid of. It was out of frustration that we created the COP. It was out of frustration that thousands of Liberians came out on June 7th and on January 6th. And January 6th, many of the opposition people undermine us. You know, I sure. say this to you, men of you sit on there, you say, let me tell you, I've made my decision. There are some opposition people I cannot support. I cannot work with. I'm, I'm just, I'm serious. It's fine for me. You could not work with me when I needed you for us to stand up for the Liberian people. You undermine my efforts. You undermine the sacrifices that we made. Then you expect me to go and support you to be president. Hmm? You expect me. The country is, 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 is bleeding. You've issued statements. You've challenged the president. You've said this, you've said that. The man does not act. He does not listen. What are you waiting for? Until he steals the election in 2023? <laughs> you sit down there. The one thing you have, you don't have money. I know all of us are going, I know money. But you have human capital. You have hundreds of thousands of people who support you. If you don't rally those people into action to bring George Weah in check, you are in trouble in 2023. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. I'm, the, the same way I warned that I bring people not to vote for George Weah, that's how I'm warning the opposition. George Weah will steal the election in 2023 and you will do nothing. Go to the Supreme Court. Don't go waste your time there. Nothing will come from there. They if you do not... Put. If you do not make George Weah fear you, George Weah does not fear the opposition. George Weah is more afraid of the COP than the, than, than the CPP. Sure. And I don't say that with disrespect. It is a statement of fact. You know why he's afraid of the COP? Even though all of us in the COP are opposition people, yes, but we are not opposition leaders. He's afraid of the COP because COP has shown that they can mobilize thousands onto the streets. Yes, many of the thousands who came out were opposition members but also many of them were seditions who are disgruntled and un unhappy with George Weah. If the opposition if the opposition can bring can intimidate Weah and make him afraid of them mm -hmm. George Weah would not attempt to steal the election in 2023. You're sitting there and say the small boy know what he's talking. I t I'm telling you the only two people in the CPP that know and work closely with Joe Weah that I know of, that me and Mr. Yuri, we know we are. We know we are. We know he games. When I was political advisor to Winston Tottenham, we worked with George Weah. Me and Mangue went to CDC together. Mangue, Mangue, they didn't know Joe Weah before me. We all went there at the same time. 
we are will steal the election. He will steal the election. And you all will sit on there and say, oh, let go the Supreme Court. Then the echo was an EU and AU will come and say, you know, for stability in the country, just let it be. Yeah. <laughs> if you do not make we are afraid of you now, we are will never be afraid of you tomorrow. Let's go back to the phone line. Yeah, be joking. I tell you something serious. The first thing is the voter rule has not been clean. The Supreme Court mandated the voter rule be clean. It has not been clean. Yeah. Some people say the voter rule cannot be clean. They need to do a brand new voter rule. The opposition has said nothing about this. The election commission needs to be restructured. The election laws of the country. You need to, the president alone will appoint all of the commissioners and there will be Daha seditions, loyal to him. March, next month, all of the commissioners at NEC, their tenure will expire and George Weah will appoint brand new commissioners. Are you, are you listening, Boakai? Okay? I'm listening. Next month, we are will appoint brand new election commissioners. Those brand new commissioners will carry instructions, specific, direct instructions, to do whatever we are wants them to do. Let the opposition be hibernating. You're waiting for election time. You got human being on your side. Scared, George. We are. If we are feels there is nothing, anything you want from we are, you can get it when you put people on the streets. The opposition has the power to bring more people than us. Sure. I'm not going to sit there and knock my chest and beat my chest and say the COP is stronger than the opposition. That is not true. The CPP is a sleeping giant that needs to wake up. I'm not talking about your internal issue, your framework agreement. I'm talking about the national, on the national stage and on the national front. You need to scare George We are. The country is volatile. The country is weak. The people are angry. This is the time to stand up and fight George We are. You see, with, with the love the people are But you're not doing it. You're sitting out there. You're waiting. You'll be yeah. waiting for election time. We are was still the damn elections. And then some oh, just keep quiet and be laughing at y'all. Let's go back to the phone lines. Me, I can tell you my own oh, sir, I'm not hiding, hiding, hiding there. Because my eating pain out of nobody else. I tell I tell, I tell you you're not. If you sit on there, this gangster, this talk, this criminal is amassing tremendous wealth. He's preparing to steal the election. You think Joe Weah want to be a one-term president? That boy will do everything. The boy has already said. Dara Janon has a big fight. Let me just tell you. Joe Weah has said he will do everything to win Monserrat County back. And Delon knows this. Weah yeah. has made a promise that he will do whatever it takes to win Monserrat. In fact, Weah is not even interested in, in the other 14 counties. The one county Weah wants is Monserrat. He wants it back. You know why he wants it back? It's simple. He feels that if he cannot get Montserrat County back, it would mean that he cannot be easily seen as being able to get re-elected in 2023. He wants Montserrat County back so badly. And we are will spend. We are will play games. We are will try to cheat. You know why we are then did not put the cheating machinery in place for Montserrat? Because they did not expect that the law would win. They did not expect that we would win. That's why they did not. But now they are expecting that we would win again. And so they will put everything in place to ensure that we do not win. you are wait and see. The things that we've heard. We have said if he will spend his last money to get Maserata back, he, 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 he would. you are wait and see. you will be playing young gun. The one thing you have on George Weah is to bring tens of thousands of human beings onto the streets and you can get anything or you can squeeze George Weah. You can squeeze him and get anything you want. But you sit on there. Opposition, opposition. When I thought the ball frisky. No disrespect, but some of us got better ideas than many, many, many of you. That is the, that is the truth. You are dealing with a talk, with a criminal. An unsophisticated idiot is who you are dealing with. The only way you can you can get this man to listen, if you bring if if John Weah hears Joe Bokai, if John Weah hears Yuri, 
a job where years come is a young lady. all four of them sit down on one platform and address the nation and say we are giving job we are 10 days to publish the report into the 25 million failure on a power we are calling on tens of thousands of our supporters to sit on the streets mm. <laughs> you know let me tell you something the power your guy you're sitting up playing with it. Look, me you give me that kind of power you see what i'll do with it. You know why Ellie is the greatest politician of our time? She's smarter than all of you. Ellie's smarter than Boakai. She's smarter than Yuri. She's smarter than Komi. She's smarter than Yomli. You know why? Ellen is a sophisticated politician. She seizes upon every moment and she exploits it and she makes the best of it. She is calculating. Ellie's smarter than all of you. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the truth. Ellen played Joe Boakai and she made we are president. You see why she did? Yeah. She played everybody. She promised Brodsky she was supporting him. Now she was talking to somebody else. At some point, she, she entertained the idea of supporting Cummings. She played all of you. Ellen is smarter than... Today, if Ellen came back into the game, she would play all of you. Ellen smarter than my own political leader. She's smarter than you. And you know this. And some of us, as much as we, we don't like Ellen, but we are strategic like Ellen in some ways. Look what we did. We capitalized. We formed the COP. Yes, the opposition supported. Yes, and we are grateful for that. But you, you, do you know what you proved on June 7th? The opposition proved that it is strong. That if it works hard, it can bring we are to his knees. You did that. The opposition proved that. But when General says we're coming, you are withdrawing from that because you say, oh, Costa getting too popular. He getting too powerful. This is what many of them did. Not all, all of them. Many of them in the opposition, they did not support us. Because they say we're getting too powerful. Am I running for president? All the no. damn work that I'm doing, who, who does it benefit? It benefits Joe Bokai. It benefits Benana Yuri. It benefits Cummings. It benefits Yumbly. All this work I do. And you're sitting down there. You're letting the boy get in strong. The boy is amassing wealth. Today! A broker, Yuri Cummings, a young lady, sit down on a platform and call a press conference and issue an ultimatum to John Weir. John Weir, Pupu Ten, will start shaking. Today. But they will not do it. If yeah. Ellen were the opposition leader, Ellen would do it. You know what Ellen did to do? You know what she did to Talbot? You know what she did to Taylor? That is why Ellen is the smartest among, she's the smartest and most sophisticated politician of her generation. All of you, you are just playing, you're play play. No disrespect, but you are play play, you are still playing. You are still playing. If Ellen were the opposition leader today, we are in trouble. If Ellen Johnson Shelley were the opposition leader, we are would be in trouble today. But look at you, my dear beloved opposition leaders. When I'm talking, oh, the buffer is today. Now they're gonna call me now. You know what they're gonna do after the show? They're gonna start calling me now, Costa. Yeah. You, 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 you have to stop this thing that you are doing. You, you are attacking the opposition leaders. That's what they're gonna tell me. Let me tell you today. After this show, someone will call me and they will say, Costa, you're frisky. You have to listen to us. You have to, they will tell me I'm frisky. They tell me all the time. I'm telling you, this is what they do to me. When I tell them the truth, they tell me, Costa, you're frisky. You got to stop doing doing this. You got to stop criticizing the opposition on the, on the radio. This is what they're going to tell me today. Tomorrow, I will come back here and tell you what they told me. I will not call names, but I will tell you. They say I'm frisky because I tell them the truth. Because I don't want the Liberian people to go to have six more years of George we are in 2023. I don't, I don't want that. Six more years of this recklessness, of this unmitigated tiffery, I do not want that. I believe in the opposition if they hold together and stand up for the Liberian people. The people look up to you, the people believe in you. I'm not going to sit there and fool myself that we, we, are, we are as popular as, 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 as Joe Buakai or as, uh, as, as the opposition put together. No, the COP, is not, the COP has just proven to you that the Liberian people want to do it, but they need the people need leadership. When the opposition worked with us in two thousand in, 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 for, for, for June seven, you saw the size of the crowd. But January six, you undermined December thirtieth pro protest. ANC issue statement because you know why they don't like Costa. 
What level of stupidity is that? You want to be president for the Liberian people? We are fighting for the same people. I'm not your competitor. I'm not running for president, Mr. Cummings. But your party issued a statement to undermine our protest because what? Because you hate Henry Costa. And what makes you better than George Weir? Petty people. You petty. How the hell can I support you for president when you're damn petty? You're just like George Weir. Because you hate Henry Costa, so you issue a freaking statement to undermine a whole protest for the Liberian people, and you call yourself fake to be president? What nonsense is that? I will speak the truth to y'all. When I finish, I will go to bed and I will sleep sound. Nobody will call me to, to tell me anything. And for Costa, you're very frisky. You're going to stop talking to the opposition that way. The opposition needs to wake up. And fellow Liberians, I'm telling you, you're hearing it from me. I'm telling you, these people need to wake up. These people need to wake up. We are playing our part. We talk to you every day. I don't expect opposition leaders to speak every day like us. I'm a talk show host. They are not. They're opposition leaders. But their voices carry huge weight because they are head of parties. Political parties that have been around for long. Many of them. They are not making use of their power. They are not making use of their power. That is the point that I'm making. The opposition is not making use out of their power. Do you know why ANC issued a statement on the money the, pro the, the protest? Because of Henry Costa. They said they're picking too frisky. Who does he think he is? What's the protest about me? Was December 30th about Henry Costa? Of course not. You know their point? You know their point? Their point is, if Costa, if, if the protest is successful, then Costa would be, you want to take the credit. That is their point. When I go to Liberia and thousands of Liberians come out to receive me, they get angry. The last time Al Jazeera wrote, they said, opposition leader Henry Costa. You're sitting down there and Al Jazeera is referring to Henry Costa as opposition leader. When I arrived in Liberia on December 19th, Al Jazeera called me, the opposition leader has arrived. AFP, writers writing about my return to the country. And you are sitting down there. You are not waking up. My people, whoa, 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 people. The international media is calling a talk show host the opposition leader. And some of you are not, and you are not waking up. I know you are, you are angry. I mean, when they saw that head, headline, myself was shocked. Al Jazeera calls me the opposition leader. But do you think you got to go to special anointing service to be called an opposition leader? No, you don't. The only difference is some of us do not head a political party. But it must wake you up. It must say something to you that Al Jazeera would refer to a talk show host as the opposition leader. That I get more international interviews than all of the opposition leaders. Wait, but I, I want to talk to these people this morning. Let me express myself to them. That I get yeah. interview on BBC and VOA and writers and Al Jazeera and you name it. Then opposition leaders. You know why? It is not because I'm smarter. No, 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 no. I'm nothing compared to them. But it is because we are the ones who are fighting. No disrespect to them. But it is because we are the ones who are sacrificing. The international media is only interested in the people who are in the news. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm talking now. I want you to hear it in a fair, objective way. But many of you were here in the other way. Oh, they begin too disrespectful. They begin to rule. You see, you see the begin. He comparing himself with us. But were you not concerned when Al Jazeera referred to Henry Costa as the opposition leader before the protest? Al Jazeera dispatched a team all the way. From they, I think they came from Togo or somewhere. They were there on another. They came to Liberia to do an exclusive interview with me. On the day of the protest, Radio France International called me from Paris, and I was on the phone for seven minutes. Daryl Jerome was sitting right there in the car with me, telling you it was also there when I did the interview. Interv inter 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 you know why they're doing this? It is not because I'm smart or I'm special. Nothing. It is because we are brave enough to stand up to fight. I want our opposition leaders to be the ones to stand up to do this. Fellow Liberians, today is February 25, 2020. If our leaders do not stand up to make this man afraid of them, 
this man will steal the election in 2023 and they will have themselves to blame and you will suffer. A Boakai, Cummings, Yuri, Yumbly can sit on the stage tomorrow, call a press conference, and demand that we are submit the 25 million report and prosecute people and demand answers into critical issues. Demand that Samuel Tua be punished for what? For failing to submit budget reports and tempering with the national budget. If they demand those things and issue an ultimatum to call a mass citizen action and bring tens of thousands of their supporters onto the streets, George we are will cave in. Yeah. They say sometimes the people who get it, the people who get it, what? What, what they can say, the, 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 the people who get it, what? They, 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 can't, they can't get a load to carry in. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. When you talk it, they say the boy frisky. The other economy right now, many of them who are listening, that, that's what they say now. They, they begin to frisky now. He frisky. He's just thinking he's something. He can thing, be something. popular. Yeah, become popular. I am pop popular. You know why I'm popular? I'm popular because the people who should be standing up are, 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 are not standing up. Period. That, that, that was what I was saying, Costa. I'm Which popular. How many of you can return to the country for, for, for... It took me six hours. From RIA to Vamoma. Six hours. Women, mothers, lined up on the road, waving palm branches, and put the lapas on the road. Six hours. To do a 45-minute drive. You know why that is the case? Because the people are looking for a leader. A real leader. Not a leader in him, but a real leader. And they are looking for it and they will find it anywhere. And they, and they see it in a 37 year old boy, they will follow him. That is why I'm so popular. You know why I'm so popular? And then I will say to you, not in an arrogant way, but I will state the fact because I want you to do it. I don't want to be the one to do this. I want my leaders to do it. I want my leaders to do it. You know why I could sit down in America 5,000 miles away and call on Liberians to go and rescue Justina Taylor? It is because the people see a leader in me. How many of you can do this? Oh yes, you can. The opposition leaders, you can do it. But you, you, you think you small people? You are the leaders of political parties. Hundreds of thousands of people follow you combined. So, instead of you looking at what we are doing and doing more of that, some of you are angry that we are popular with the Liberian people. You think I know some of your envy us? Envy. That's the reason why they, they, they were issuing statement close to the protest. They said they must kill the protest. The protest was meant for the Liberian people. To expose the corruption, to expose the way we are destroying the country. Hmm? And some of you undermine the protest. Some, not all, some of the opposition leaders. You saw their statements. We don't support the protest. We want to make it very clear. We are against the protest. The protest is undemocratic. That you're passing and running, immobilizing people. You won't be president. But you can't stand up for the Liberian people. Now when they need you the most. We were hustling, raising money for the protest. Raising money, looking for money all over the place. Only a few opposition people help us. I will not call their names. A few opposition leaders helped us. Some of you were all the plenty of money you got. You did not help us. You did not give us one cent to organize. Because you are working against us. And then you expect me to support you for president tomorrow. Yeah, right. Sit there. You think I'm stupid? You think I'm stupid? You need to stand up for the Liberian people today. And I come into Liberia again in May or, or, or June. You will see. The human being you saw on the streets on December 19, there will be more than the people you will see when I come to Liberia. This is how the people look for leaders. In. Then so now you'll say, but why are the people following that man a day? You, you, you get understand it? Are you seriously still wondering why the people love Pedro? On my personal Facebook page, I have 101,000 human beings following me there. The highest any Liberia has. 101,000. My personal Facebook page. Go check it out. Why do so many people follow this guy? Now, they don't necessarily, all of them don't necessarily agree with me. But the fact is that they're looking for leadership. The people are looking for leadership. 
And I want, I beg our leaders to stand up and be leaders. Leaders in action, not just leaders in name. Dale Yankan, you will be playing Yankan until 2023. That I will be Joya. Brother, is this how we will, is this how we will be Joya? Huh? Al Jazeera is calling me opposition leader arrives home. They are still sitting out there. They tell a seven year old picking who's still struggling to get a bachelor degree. Who's graduating in December by the grace of God. Then you are saying, Al Jazeera calling him opposition leader. Sending a whole television crew to can't interv interview him. BBC Oman story for days. They are still sitting out there. But what are the people then doing? <laughs> but the problem they waiting for an appropriate time uh, uh, or reach 20, 20, 22, 2021 20, and then uh, while we're going for election they can come out that's the time they can they, they, they will come out and start engaging the process so now they won't talk too much they still trying to pull a horse in order <laughs> I am not an opposition leader I am just a radio talk show host and I have more international media attention than the opposition leaders. That says a lot. Call it disrespect, but let's call it the moment of truth. Let's call it internal examination. The international media pays more attention to Henry Costa than to the opposition leaders. Why is that? It is because they don't think the opposition leaders are standing up and fighting. It is simple. I want them to stand up for their own sake and for the people who look to them. That's my appeal to them. But I felt that this morning I needed to tell them the truth, poor guy. So they will hear the truth. The country needs leadership. The people love Joe Buakai. They love him. Joe Baga is extremely popular. Hmm? Mm. The people respect him. They, they, they don't love Joe Baga for the same way that they love Henry Costa. No, 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 no. Way more people love Joe Baga than they love Heron, Heron Costa. Period. They see him a leader. When they see Costa, they see a revolutionary, a fighter. They don't see me and regard me the same way they see Joe Buck. I know. You think I don't know that? They see much, much more in Joe Buck. Much, much more. I see it. Every day I see it. And I tell the old man. But he and Yuri, the, the people respect Yuri. A lot of people admire and respect him. You know why? For that fire in his belly. His boldness. He tackles things head on. He will tell you exactly how he feels. He does not hold his tongue. People respect that. They respect that. Whether you agree with him or not, he tells you exactly how, how, he, how he feels. And, and, and that's why some of the people in the opposition don't like. But that's better than you. He's not going to change because of you. That's who he is. The people who support Mr. Cummings, they love him for the fact that he's from corporate America. He is supposed to have these great ideas to revitalize the country's economy. What economy after we are? Boca, answer, 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 answer me, Boca. Nothing. All those great ideas Cummings claims he has, where is he going to implement them? Yeah, please tell me. Where is... Come is going to implement those ideas. After we are destroyed the country? <laughs> would, there, would there be anything left for the opposition to even start with? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You, you. you understand? I understand the people who love Cummings. The people who support Cummings. They see in Cummings an outsider who is untinted by the bad governance system, the corruption in the country, and he's coming with fresh ideas to change the country. That's how they see him. I respect that. I do. I really do. 
My only problem with them to act like he's better than everybody else. I have a problem with that. But I, I, I respect to a large extent what they see in Arizona comments. I respect that. I understand that. I appreciate that. I don't entirely agree with them, but I, I respect what they see in comments. They see a successful man in corporate, in corporate America, even though whether he would be able to do the same thing in Liberia is a totally different thing, but I see that. I can understand that. And Mr. Cummings is indeed a very successful man. He, he, he's, a, he's accomplished a lot. And do you know the one thing I respect Cummings for? His accomplishment. Anybody who has succeeded in life, I respect them because I am ambitious myself. Mm. And I want to be successful. So anybody who has succeeded in life through hard work, I respect them. I respect Cummings for that. I do. I say it all the time, but some of you don't want to hear it. But I respect Mr. Cummings. What Cummings did in corporate America, only a handful of Liberians have come close to doing it. And I respect him. You know? So the issue here is they need to put this thing aside and fight for Liberia. And to the ANC people, this your thing with Henry, Henry Costa is not helping you, it's hurting you. Believe it or not, my voice reaches way more people than Mr. Cummings' voice. Some of y'all said I want to lie. That is the truth. Now, it doesn't mean those people will vote for me if I say I'm running for president. But the fact of the matter is that many of them believe in the fight that I'm fighting in than they believe in Mr. Cummings. It is, it is the truth. It doesn't mean me and Cummings can run for president and I'll get more votes than him. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there are people who's, who listen more to Henry Costa, who believe Henry Costa more than they will listen to Cummings or they will listen to Yumbly. That is the truth. Whether you like it or not, it is the truth. Our voice carries so much weight in the country. And we are not political leaders. I'm, I'm not a competition. I'm, I'm not in competition with ANC. The ANC, you need to understand this. I'm not running to be president. Me and Mr. Cummings are not peers. I'm 37. The man is what? 60, 64? Mm. That man, man cried about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to be acting like... Look, and this is to Elizabeth Cummings, I've been in politics longer than Cummings. I know politics better than Cummings. Cummings, I end up all the 2016. I'm telling you, you need to be careful with those people around you. You need to be very, very careful with them. Many of them are following you today because you're very generous to, to, to them. Everywhere you go, you put Mariah, them on the plane, you carry... Come is the only man who can afford to do that, but he carries a special assistant on the fly. He carries people with him. Mm. Yes. He flies them every, everywhere. You see why Mariah costing people for Cummings? Cummings can fly Mariah everywhere, which is nice. It's good. Good exposure. Cummings can afford to do that. But that doesn't mean Mariah is so loyal and she loves Cummings so much. She does not. Because only a few years ago, Mariah was on Facebook attacking Alexander Cummings. I'm telling you the truth. If coming to you today, I told you today, my voice will reach way more people. Isn't that, isn't that the truth? You go do Facebook Live, then I will reach way more people than all of y'all. Dana, Dana, la. It does not mean those people who listening to me see me as the man that will make president. No. But it only means that my words carry more weight with them. You have to understand that. This is what they call influence. My words carry more weight with them. You have to understand this. And don't be jealous of me. It took me eight years to be here. Eight freaking years. I went to jail two times. I got shot at to be here. I want to help you all for the sake of the country. That is what I want to do. I want to help the opposition for the sake of the Liberian people. <laughs> but when you see me as your enemy, how can I help you? Some of you say, but what can cause I do for? I see some first day ANC people be making be more. Of course, I'm not nothing. Cause I'm not nothing. Something wrong with you? It's not what I. It's not about liking me or not. It's not about me tooting my own home. But we earn our place. We are here today because we work hard to be here. The hundreds of thousands of Liberians who believe in us, they saw us fall. They saw us get up and keep moving, and that's why they believe in us. It didn't happen overnight. 
So you can't just get and open your mind and talk nonsense. They don't listen to you. They believe in what we fight for. I want to help you, the opposition, but you got to fight for the Liberian people. You got to fight to protect your future. Your future is 2023. How do you win 2023? If you do not stand up now and make we are afraid of you, you have to make that little boy afraid of you that he will not even think about stealing the damn election in 2023. Now my advice to y'all. Now my advice to y'all. President Tito, the mayor will start with 2020 year first. When the mayor finish, when the mayor finish stealing 2020 election, then y'all be complaining. Y'all be running the Supreme Court. What Supreme what? Supreme Court. <laughs> Rather than fighting Henry Costa, you can't win me. I fought Ellen Johnson Shelley. God kept me alive. She shut down radio station. We went somewhere else. We kept fighting. Ellen did not destroy me. I am here today. We're fighting George Weir. He tried to have the Sierra Leoneans extradite me. The plan failed. They sent people on the day of the protest to assassinate me. It was exposed. The people were arrested. You can't. I know someday I will be a leader, but leader of the country, yeah, someday I will be. I see it. And it, it has been ordained. I will lead that country one day. But it is not now. But rather than see me as an ally, somebody to work with, some of you hate me. Then I shouldn't talk. Don't talk. Cause that you know when you talk, then you sound arrogant. You gotta be one humble. What kind of nonsense is that? The older man should be able to talk about to praise himself and talk good about himself, right? Right, black guy. Soon the begin won't talk by himself, and then uh, uh, the begin you're just risking. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you get thirty nine year old Macron and getting elected president. The, the prime minister of Finland thirty one year old, uh, thirty seven year old. We are working with y'all. Then y'all say we are beginning. We're not, we're not for so y'all then again. We are leaders in our own right. You need to respect us too. I, mm -hmm. I will demand respect from everybody. Everybody I work with, I will demand respect. You don't respect me, I will not support you. Call me arrogant. That's your damn business. That's your business. Call me arrogant. They quit to call you arrogant when you are young. Oh, they, 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 they begin arrogant. They begin fresque. Now fresque. They think I can do some more. Y'all can do it. Y'all need to get up for the librarian people. That's my appeal to you. Come on today again with reporters. Come and say we're acting to you. Yeah. <laughs> when I talk now, someone else will go issue statement on their Facebook page. Some of you can write on Facebook, you can't even get uh, pe people to even like what you what you wrote. Some of you go live, you can't even get 100 people correct. I go live in three minutes, I get what 1,000 human beings watching. Later on, it goes to tens of thousands of people. I got 100, 1,000 human beings on my personal Facebook page alone. The Costa Show got 279,000 people. The, my other page, I got 50,000 people. I got half a million people following me on social media. Then y'all be fighting. Yeah, you can fight me. You able to fight me. I was born to fight. I didn't go to school to be talk show host. I was born to do this thing. This is a God-given gift. I can, I can sit down here for five hours I will talk. I would not run out of Justina Taylor operation. That was the longest running Costa show, the longest running edition of the Costa show, five hours and 39 minutes. I was yeah. here talking. Five hours, 39 minutes, and we're motivating by you. Think that mean that God, it's a, it's a gift. You can fight people who are gifted. You will not win them. Even if you're president, you think what made Marabio intern me over the job we are. That God. You can't wake up to that. You can't fight me. I may not have money. I may, I may not have uh, 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 fancy degrees just yet. But I have a God-giving gift and God's anointing is upon me. You're wasting your time. Everybody, everybody got their time. Some of y'all die your time. Some of y'all die your time. Everybody got their era. 
some of y'all supposed to be political leaders now. Some of y'all who are political leaders now, that your time, this is what it's meant to be. Use it for the good of the people. I'm a talk show host now. That's, this is my time. I'm an advocate now. This is my time. Tomorrow I will leave this stage. Maybe Bogart will take over. Somebody else will take over. And they, they may be even more powerful than I am. Because that is the way it's meant to be. One man cannot be there always. Yeah. I hope the advice that I have offered to you, the opposition leaders, I hope you will take it on a serious consideration. If you do not stand up now, we are will steal the elections in 2023 and the country would be doomed. I'm saying no. And people, yeah, yeah, yo. Ah. What guy? Yeah. I meant that. That is it. So when they come and call me now, man, you first get. Uh, start battling the opposition leader. Start talking to the people. Start leave, leave us alone. That was when they're talking, nah, nah. That was when they're talking, nah, nah. Yeah. They will not listen to the thing I'm telling you now. That the truth, which hurts many of them, she was let, let me let me let me ask uh, uh, the ANC people. Do you really think y'all can fight me? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Do you really think you can fight me? The moth I get, the people who listen to me. You know, if I want dead to you, I can dead to you in one week consistently. One week I can get dead to you. Do you, you don't know I can do it? You don't know? <laughs> wait, 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 what wrong with the people, boy? If I won't fight, if I won't fight that the nasty, I can fight. But there is no need to do that. It would be stupid of me to, 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 to do that. That's why when you attack me, I can respond. And so they can say, I attack him, I attack them. You know him because I attack him. Eh? 2017, last time you saw the job, yeah? Demoralize him, play for all of him. All the clips that I will release, that who played in? Ten and a half. Synagogue God, this one, that one. I have a natural gift to do nasty propaganda if I if I if I want to. Everybody knows it. We demoralize CDC with they all kind of thing to them. Ellen cheated at all. Joe, 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 yeah, ain't we? We he, thought uh President said he was supporting Joe Baca. We did all sort of things here yes, on the radio. I be, when I believed. Honestly, I thought Ellen was supporting Joe Baca in the first round. Yeah. yeah. What did we didn't do? We get ticket. And now stock. On UP, a stock on UP. Which other talk show host in the country said things during the election that can be remembered even several years after the election? Name one. No. All the phrases, the key phrases of the campaign, the the the, the, the different jingles with, that we developed for Joe propaganda. Joe Bo and Poison is yeah. the most famous one. People remember it still today. Then you say what? In? Joe Bo and Poison, people remember you today. You want me to fight you? You show you want me, you want me to fight you? You show you can fight me? You show you can fight me? When I write a fight, I small fighting. <laughs> Look at it, you want it. Look, don't try it. Leave me alone. I'm not an enemy. Focus on standing up for the Liberian people. That is what you should focus on. Trying to ensure that we are does not steal a legend in 2020, 2023. That's what you should you should you should do. You better focus focus on that. You maybe fight war. You that small war. Hi yaka. That a small war. You want war from Pedro? Huh. I, I I see you. But Baga, I, I see you, my man. Okay. Thanks. Ooh.